And so I had decided to take one for the team. I let them move me up to first class. <laughs> <laughs> I did what I had, you guys. <laughs> Now, getting back to a little bit more serious stuff, one of the absolute craziest things that has ever happened to me took place in the fall of 2010. I was in a cross country meet, and there were runners from about 30 different teams, including my teammates and I. Now, the officials had had everybody in a circle going over the rules of the race, and I was a little bit nervous because it was a big race. So I, I was ticking a lot more, and I was ticking a lot louder. The referees, though, had thought that I was just trying to be rude and obnoxious. So they had told me to shut up. I had tried to explain my threats to tell them that I couldn't control what I was doing, but they, didn't, they weren't understanding, they weren't listening to it. So I was told to shut up again. Now, thankfully, my teammates were there to have my back. They had known about my Tourette's, they knew I wasn't trying to be rude or obnoxious, they know I can't control it. So they also tried to explain what was going on to the referees. Guess what? They were also told to shut up. Now this went on for longer than it should have at least. And to make a very long story short, the final result of this was that I was actually disqualified from that race. And I wasn't allowed to have my time count because of something that I couldn't control and something that I was born with. Now, after the race, I had a lot of my teammates come up to me and tell me that they had run the fastest race that they could just so they could get to the finish line to tell an adult what had happened. Now, I want you guys to take away something from this story, and it is definitely not how bad I had felt when I was disqualified because of this. Now, I want you guys to take away how great it was that I had my friends there to stand up for me. Too many times in situations that people know are wrong, they're bystanders. They, they don't stand up, they don't say, hey man, what you're doing isn't right. I know it took a lot of courage for my friends to stand up to even anyone, let alone an adult. And I thank them every chance I get, which actually leads me to my hair. I know it's beautiful, but I had actually shaved my head with the cross country team because we made it to states this year and I do what I can to support them and they did it so I did it with them. Hi. Now that event was really the spark that it started a fire inside of me to do what I can to stop people from having to experience what I did. I've done many projects, many talks to try to spread the message of tolerance, still in air quotes. Last year, one of the bigger things that we've done, I did this with the help of my family, we held an event called the Tolerance Fair. And what it was, was we had had what ended up being about a thousand people that attended and 48 different charity and advocacy groups. What we were trying to do was expose the people in my community to how they could get involved with volunteer work. Because we believe that the more you get involved, the more you'll be a tolerant, still in air quotes, person. Now, we're actually in the process of planning another tolerance center, and really we're trying to expand it now past just my community, and we're actually trying to get all of Northeast Ohio. But our long-term goal is to make it a national event, because intolerance is an issue everywhere, not just in Ohio. Now, I've shared some of my stories with you guys, but I want to give you a glimpse of what this intolerance can do to people, you guys.